Up until about a year ago, they really didn't speak English at all. I'm Olivia. Mate. I'm five. I'm three. So for this, I really had to just start pretending that I didn't speak Croatian anymore. Hi everybody and welcome back to our channel. I'm Sarah, a Canadian expat living in Croatia. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about raising our kids bilingually and just answer some of the questions you all had about languages and how we are raising them with both Croatian and English at home. I'll also show you a few clips of them speaking both English and Croatian. So many of you have asked, do our kids speak Croatian? And I think you've asked this because usually when our kids are in our videos, they speak English and that's because they speak English to me. When they're in the video, they're speaking to me usually and that's why you hear them speaking English and not Croatian. I don't really think as of now they've spoken much Croatian in the videos except for the Pekka video. I think they do speak Croatian there because we're at Evan's parents' house and they only speak Croatian with Evan's parents. So yes, to answer your question, they do speak Croatian. We live in Croatia. Uh, they go to preschool in Croatian. Our neighbors speak Croatian. Um, just life outside of our home is all in Croatian. So yes, they do speak it beautifully. <laughs> Next question. Do they speak English? Yes, they do now, but it wasn't as simple or easy to get to this point as I thought it would be. I always thought it would be really easy for them to learn English and to speak English, and it would just be a really simple, natural, easy process because my mother tongue is English, and it would just happen really organically without even really having to try. But that really wasn't the case. Up until about a year ago, they really didn't speak English at all. They only spoke Croatian. Uh, they understood English 100%, but they just only spoke Croatian. So when we would have conversations, um, I would speak to them in English, and they would just reply back to me always in Croatian, always, no exceptions. You want to go sleepy time? No. Well, why don't you want to go to sleep, though? No. Why not? It's hot there? Yeah. In your room? Yeah. Okay, what if mommy turns off the heat? Then yeah. it'll be better? No. I have to go sleepy time. It's dark out. It's late already. Yeah. It's time for bed. Yeah. Your eye hurts? What happened? You hit it on the TV? Yeah. So we started this bilingual journey with the kids using the one parent, one language method. So that's where each parent speaks their own native language only to their children. And that way the children hear each native language as it's meant to be spoken without mistakes and without really an accent. And in that way, they really pick up each language more naturally, I guess. So we did that method up until about a year ago. Um, and then we just realized that it wasn't working for our family. So let me explain why the one parent, one language approach just didn't work for us. So when we were at home as a family, um, even with be speaking Croatian as he was supposed to with this one parent, one language, then the kids would be speaking Croatian because that's just what they were used to all day long when they were at school and when they were at the park. Um, daily life here is in Croatian, so that was just more at the forefront of their brains. And so when they're at home, they also just kind of naturally went to Croatian. Um, and even when they spoke to me. So I was the only person speaking English with the five of us. No matter how much I spoke to the kids in English, they would always respond back to me in Croatian because they were just more comfortable speaking that language. And they just didn't feel like it was necessary to respond to me in English because they knew that I understood Croatian. But when I heard everybody around me only speaking Croatian, then I kind of just switched to speaking that language without even really realizing it. And then by the time we knew it, we'd all just be speaking Croatian. And so I found it kind of tricky to keep it really strictly English coming from me when everything that surrounded me was Croatian, if that makes sense. So up until a year ago, they really did only speak Croatian and they only played in Croatian. Here are just a couple clips to get a glimpse of that. Pause it. Okay. Oh, Okay, I'm going to put the music. 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 I'm going to put
Oma imasa the onite. So another one of my mistakes was just wrongly assuming that they would effortlessly be able to all of a sudden speak English if they were in a situation where they had to. So if we went to Canada and visited my family, that all of a sudden that English that they had been hearing from me, they understood so well what I was saying um, that I just thought it would be a simple switch if we were in a position where they had to speak English. I don't know why, it just seemed very plausible to me that that would be the case. I was wrong about that. And I realized that on our last trip back to Canada at the end of 2019, at this point, Olivia had just turned four, Mate was two and a half, and Sophia was just about to turn one. So that trip was about a month. And I thought, you know, once we got there and got into the swing of things and they were playing with their cousins, that surely English would just switch on and they would be able to play in English with their cousins and they would be able to speak to uh, all of my family in Canada. So that didn't happen and that's when I started to think, okay, maybe it's time to reassess our approach when we get back to Croatia. It did kind of make me sad that my kids weren't able to speak to my family back home and that's definitely what triggered this kind of push for learning English. So when we got back to Croatia, we completely changed our approach from the one parent, one language to the four walls approach. I think that's what it's called. And that just says that you speak one language within the four walls of your home. And that's the language that is the different language than what is immediately outside around you. So in our case, that language is English. And so now we speak only English at home and that has just done wonders for everyone. So for this, I really had to just start pretending that I didn't speak Croatian anymore. Um, and my kids were still young enough and they kind of just bought it after a while and they just assumed, okay, mommy doesn't know Croatian. So now we just have to speak English with her. The kids started slowly adding more English vocabulary into their sentences. They were mixing with Croatian and it was really cute. And eventually more and more and more English words were added and then they really got to a point of fluency and they were only speaking English at home. And they even play with each other now in English. You can fly. <laughs> I'm a fly ah, because that's fire and it makes the hole. And I'm a boy. And actually a fire truck Lucia. This is a fire truck Ruby. Fire truck Lucia. Please let it loud and down. Good job. Now we will spray the fire on. Now let's go, Polly. Up the seat curtains. Uh, ever here we go. Spray the everything up in the castle. Okay. Here we go for a big splash. Ready? Here we go. Fire truck Ruby, please hold this here. Okay. It's gotten to the point where they kind of have even forgotten about the time when I did speak Croatian at home and they really believe that I don't really know Croatian at all. What language does mommy speak? English. English. Does mommy know any Croatian? Mm, no. Not really. Not really. How many words do you think I know? Maybe some of the words. Like, how many do you think? Maybe 90. Like 90 words? Right, that's what good. about you, Mate? What do you think? What do you think? How many words does mommy know in Croatian? I think 10. About 10? Of course they do hear me speak it occasionally when I'm talking to the cashier at the grocery store or something. And then sometimes they'll turn to me and they'll say, Mommy, bravo, you just spoke Croatian, really good job. And I'll just say, oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how that happened. It just, just came out. And then we'll carry on about our day and there will be no other mention of it. They've just totally forgotten the time when we had mixed languages at home. So Sophia is actually the only one who started speaking English first. And this happened because Sophia was still a baby when we started this four walls approach of English at home. It's funny because she's really the only one whose first words were in English. But she does, of course, speak both languages and understands both languages, but she just turned two and so her speaking is still in the early stages. English is just a little bit more dominant at this point. Here are a couple of examples of Sofia just speaking and understanding both languages. My <laughs> Doggies quack quack quack. Bunny eating carrots. Yeah, bunny's eating carrots, huh? Bunny eating broccoli. And the bunny's eating broccoli. Mhm. Mm and what about this bunny here? The bunny's sad. The bunny's sad. Why is the bunny sad? Where are your eyes? 
Where are your cheeks? Where's your neck? Where are your ears? Where is your chin? Where are your shoulders? Good job. Dienos. Dienos. Dear Glava. Good job. Di Suruke. Good job. Dear Usta. Good job. Dear Cosa. Dear Cosa. Good job. Oh, mommy. More soup. More soup? Mm -hmm. Are you hungry? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me get you some more soup. So throughout this process, people were also just trying to be supportive and just say, you know, don't worry, they're going to learn English. Kids learn it really early in school here. Relax, there's time, don't rush it. Um, they'll get there eventually. And while that's true, and I know that they would learn English eventually in school, it was just a little bit different in my case because this was the way for them to have more of a relationship with my family back in North America. Um, and they just can't do that in Croatian because I don't have Croatian roots and so none of my family speaks that language. And so for me, it was just really important for them to start speaking English as soon as possible. I just felt really guilty that they couldn't yet have normal conversations with everyone back home. And I just felt really overwhelmed by that because I just felt like all that pressure was on my shoulders just to get these kids bilingual as fast as possible. So it was just a relief when this approach really started working um, and they really started speaking. I can say what a great time when anybody... Switch to Krishna? Uh, okay, then, then when, when the little boy said, oh, why you are so beautiful, but I'm going to not kiss you, said girl, 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 ever. And then when they get married, they lived happily ever after. The end. Chicha Micha, go to my Pricha. My favorite animal is platypus. A porcupine, not a hedgehog. What's that called? I don't know that. Yes, I know that. A zebra octopus. A zebra octopus. Mm -hmm. Oh, where does he live? He lives in the sea. Oh. Yeah, I'm a giraffe. You're a giraffe. Huh? Yeah. Why? 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 Dugi rat. Bravo. What is your favorite thing to eat? Uh, mine is when mommy makes fish. When mommy makes fish? And, and, and rice. And rice. And mine when mommy and, and makes zucchini soup. And zucchini soup. Mm. And mine is potato soup. And Pancake. Do you like when mommy makes pancakes? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's still my favorite meal. Uh, they've really come so far in just such a short amount of time and uh, I'm just really proud of my babies. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and you got some perspective on what it's like raising bilingual children. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching everybody. We love Canada and Croatia. Okay.